Hello everyone and welcome to the second part of Electron Configuration Notes. If you are a little bit lost and you haven't really watched through the first part, you should. Uh, the first part of that was that Electron Configuration Concert Map seating. And I know that analogy was a little bit confusing for some, and so if you weren't quite picking up the Electron versus seating people idea, that's okay. But we did want you to get used to using that little cheat sheet, the kind of follow the yellow brick road, I called it. And we also wanted to get used to that, you know, S's, that, that section holds two, and that P as a section holds six. So if you got that out of it, I think you're in good shape. And then hopefully through the last part of part one notes, and then today's notes, you will get there for this electron configuration. The other part of part one was we talked about the SPD and F orbitals and what they look like and how electrons exist within them. And we also then um, kind of finished up with the idea of the off-bow principle, which is something we need to follow as we work through configuration, as well as Hun's rule, which is something that we need to follow through, although it's a little bit harder to show in what we're going to be doing, um, so we won't be applying it as much. So let's get into it. First things first, you really want to have something like this labeled. Now, if you want to label this, and we did this in week four um, for the second class that week, um, so I would suggest getting something like this down. Now, if you don't want to color code it, that's fine if you want to just label instead. So you've already been working on a periodic table, and there's a bunch of info on there. That's that's good. So if you want to add this to it, that's great. If you want to just do this as a brand new, fresh periodic table, that is fine too. Um, you can use periodic tables as often as you need. Um, and so especially on quizzes and tests in class, uh, that's fair. It's just got to be one of these that we've made and not random uh, periodic tables off the internet. And so you'll notice on this periodic table, we've got our S block, which is right here. And again, S can hold two. So notice as example across two S, there's one, two elements, and that carries all the way through. Right here is going to be your P, not including helium. And P has three orbitals, each holding two electrons. So we get a total of six. And you'll notice that six elements are across any of these P's. Next D can hold a total of 10 electrons. Again, five orbitals, but times two electrons per gives me 10 electrons across. Finally, the F orbitals, which we will not deal with often, but if you move across here, 14 electrons. So this was one of the things that we wanted you to get from the concert seating activity was that S's hold two, P's hold six total, D's hold 10 total, and the F's can hold 14. Once you fill that up, you got to move on to the next available spot. Now with the concert seating, we said the seats closest to the stage are the best. What we're talking about here, when we talk about filling in 1s to start and then 2s, those aren't seats so much. Those are orbitals closest to the nucleus. And those orbitals closest to the nucleus have the least amount of energy. Thus, we want electrons to fill in there first. But here's an example. I just want to go through this example a little bit slowly, kind of step by step. And I think that going through this once or twice is going to be sufficient for most of you to pick up on what's, what we're trying to accomplish. The good thing and or bad thing, depending on how you look at it, is you have a, a few different options on how to approach this. So ultimately what I want is I want zirconium, I want to get the electron configuration for it. So there's a few ways to do that. The first thing you could do is um, find it on a periodic table. You pretty much want to do that no matter what. And you find it right here. So I'm going to mark it, X marks the spot. There's zirconium. That's what we need to show the configuration for. At this point, there's a few ways to do this. You could move across the periodic table and read it like a book. So we start with 1s, we go across, and then we come down to the next line, 2s, then 2p, then the next line, 3s, 3p. Because you've labeled, we go to 4s, 3d, then back to 4p. And you could just fill this in until you hit zirconium. That is one way to do it, and I'll kind of mention it that way here. The other way to do it is to know that you've got 40 electrons. And the reason I know I've got 40 electrons is that the atomic number, which remember, atomic number is protons, but for a neutral atom that is not an ion, we can assume that the 40 protons will be neutral, uh, neutralized by 40 electrons. So I have 40 electrons to fill. And you could use this guide to fill electrons as you go. And again, it's important to remember that your S can hold two electrons, your P can hold 6, D can hold 10, and F can hold 14. So if you know there's 40 electrons, you wouldn't even really have to look at the periodic table much. You would just fill in 
and go until you use up all 40. In this example, to try to kind of cover both ideas, I'm going to do both at once, and hopefully that won't be too confusing. So I've got 40 electrons to go. I'm trying to meet or match um, this spot on the periodic table. So I need to go until I hit this spot and use up all 40 electrons. We will always start with 1s. So we start with 1s here. And if I'm reading on the periodic table, it's 1s to start. And with 40 electrons to fill, we're going to put the 2 in there. So I start with 1s2. S's can only ever hold 2. Takes me down to 38 electrons. And again, if I were to just fill in the 2, now I'm going to fill in this 2 and move down to 2s. So as I work my way through, after 1s comes 2s. And s again can hold 2 electrons. And again, we're going to subtract from our total. And realize I'm right, I've filled into this. After 2s, you can use this. We go from 2s to 2p. If you follow along the periodic table, after 2s, we come across to 2p. Now p can hold 6 electrons. And with 36 to go, I'm going to fill in all six electrons. 30 electrons to go. I've now filled in through 2p. And as I move, read this like a book, after I finish this line, I'll come down to 3s. Again, here, after we finish 2p, we come down to 3s. S's can hold two. That leaves me 28 to go. I filled through here, just completed 3s. We're going to come up here, come diagonally again, and now we come to 3p. And again, as I move from 3s, I come to 3p. P's can hold 6. And it's going to leave me 22 to go. So again, I've, I've gone all the way through. You can always double check. I've gone through s, 2s, completed 2p and 3s. We just, just finished 3p. So that puts me through 3p to 4s. And I'm going to work on 3s next. S's can hold 2. 20 to go. I've just completed through 4s. After 4s, this is where it gets tricky, but if you've properly uh, filled out your periodic table and labeled it, you know that from 4s we go to 3d. And again, as we fill out 4s here, we come to 3d. This is a weird idea because we're in the fourth energy level, and yet we're going from 4s, we're dropping back down to the third energy level. And then as you'll notice, after the third 3d, we come back up to the 4p energy level. So this is a little bit confusing because we are going from the fourth to the third back to the fourth energy level. But the reason we go from 4s to 3d back to 4p is that 3d energetically fits between 4s and 4p. And so we went through that a little bit in that first part of this uh, set of notes. And so if uh, you need to go back and double check that, it might be a good idea. So I filled through 4s. I'm now at 3d. And these can hold 10 electrons. And again, with 20 electrons left to go, and also realize we haven't hit, haven't hit zirconium yet. And so we're going to fill in 3D with all 10 electrons. Takes me down to 10 electrons to go. I filled all the way across here. I'll move into 4P. Again, I filled in all the way across here. I'm in 4P. Now this 4P can hold 6. Takes me down to four electrons to go. And again, I've filled in all the way through here. I'm going to move down to 5s. And again, I've filled in through 4p, so that puts me at 5s. And s can hold two electrons. Takes me down to two electrons to go. I've filled in the 5s. I'm going to end in 4d. So again, I went from 4p, 5s, and notice I'm in 4d, and notice zirconium is in 4d. So we know that a D can hold 10. But in this case, I've only got two electrons to go. And the other way to think about it is if you're using the periodic table method, if you count over, zirconium is one, two elements over. So we end at 4D, two. So one way or another, we have used up all of our electrons. We have gone and read the periodic table like a book until we've hit uh, zirconium with 40 electrons. And there's one last thing, and I'm not going to do this right now. If you total up all of these numbers across the top, all of these superscripts, they better add up to your original 40. So this is, I know it's a little messy, it's hard to write on this pad, but this would be your electron configuration for zirconium. And again, whether you use this method of just going through here and using up all 40, or you could have just gone and filled in until you hit zirconium, 
Either way, this should get you the correct configuration. Now, I want to move on uh, and mention just very quickly, and this is not, I don't want you to get confused here. There are some exceptions on the periodic table. You do not need to know them. I want you to know they exist because if you look up the configuration for, let's say, copper, and you're just using the internet because you're being lazy and you're not actually doing the worksheets, you're going to see this. And I don't want you to use that. Don't worry about it. I can explain why if you ever care outside of class. I will know you're not actually doing this because this doesn't follow the off-bow principle. We need to follow off-bow principle. We need to fill in our least energetic orbitals first before filling into higher energies. There's a reason that this happens, but I'll know you're just copying off the internet because I'm not teaching you to do this. So you don't need to know these. I just want you to realize if you were looking on the internet and a little bit confused, there's some some of these weird situations um, where we don't fall off bow, we always fall off bow for us. So last thing is I wanna do just one more, um, and I'm gonna go quickly, but I wanna do one more example. There are two ways you will need to show me configurations. One is the electron configuration, that's what we just did. But you will be happy to know there's a shorthand configuration as well. And we're gonna get to used, we're gonna get very used to using this shorthand, it's just quicker and simpler. So electron configuration, that's what we just did. And I know it's a lot of work when we start to get these really big um, elements that have a large number of electrons, which is why we're going to learn that shorthand. So again, this, these numbers and letters, all this is your electron configuration. And really, when you're doing the electron configuration, you're following off bow principle. Whether you follow the periodic table or you follow that diagonal filling chart, you're gonna get off bow correct. So quickly, I am going to do geranium, or germanium, sorry, not a flower. And so as I scan, I will find it right here, 32 electrons. Now you could use this diagonal filling chart. I'm actually just gonna use the periodic table. So I'm gonna fill this, reading it like a book, I'm gonna fill it until I hit um, germanium. And so the first place I start is 1s. I'm gonna fill that in because germanium is not in 1s. After I go through 1s, I go to 2s. It's not in there, so I'm going to fill it up. We move across here to 2p. It is not in 2p, so I fill it up with its 6. Remember, 6 for p's. It's not there, so 3s is not in there, so I'll fill it up. We move across to 3p. It's not in there. Fill it up. We're still looking for germanium. Down to 4s. After 3p, I come down. We're reading like a book. It is not in 4S, so we'll fill it up. It is not in 3D, so I'm going to fill 3D up. Remember, D can hold 10. And now we get to 4P, and it is in 4P. So I'm going to put 4P, but I'm not going to put how many. All I need to do is count 1, 2, over, and there is your configuration. Again, you would have gotten that this way if you worked with your 32 electrons that you're trying to fill and you just use these and filled them until you got rid of 32, you would get your same configuration as up here. It is a personal choice for what makes sense to you to fill. This is your normal electron configuration. And again, it's a lot of kind of writing and it gets a little bit annoying as you get used to it because it's actually pretty easy and it kind of becomes busy work. What I want to point out, because I'm about to talk about how we do the shorthand, what I want to point out is this column right here. This family is known as the noble gases. So helium, neon, argon, krypton, xenon, and radon are the noble gases. Those become important. They should be labeled on your periodic table already, but these will be important as we work through the shorthand configuration. So this was normal electron configuration. I'm about to show you how to do shorthand. And I will um, get to that in the next slide, but just again, the, uh, the noble gases here are important. And remember, we read like a book, this periodic table to get to germanium. We're gonna have to go backwards here for the shorthand. So I will show you that on the next slide. So to write the shorthand configuration, the first thing you need to do is go backwards. So we want the noble gas that precedes, that comes before, that's what precedes mean. So to put the symbol of the noble gas that precedes the element that becomes before it in brackets. Second thing you're gonna do is just write the configuration from that point. So let's look at germanium again. It's the one we just did. You just saw the 32 electrons placed in the configuration around the nucleus for germanium. 
And so here's kind of a modified periodic table, but here's geranium. And what I mean by the preceding noble gas is I need to go backwards until I hit a noble gas. And we just said that this right here are the noble gases, this column is the noble gas. And so the other way to think about it is just go up and over until you hit a noble gas. But when you do a shorthand configuration, you've got to be using one of these elements. So in this case, I think I kind of show you that we go up and over to get to our noble gas, or you could be thinking going backwards to the noble gas. But once you identify the noble gas that comes before the element we're concerned about, you're going to put it in brackets. And then all you need to do is go from this noble gas. So if I were to continue now that I've identified the noble gas as argon, if I continue forward, like I'm reading a book, I'm going to be at 4s. And again, germanium is not in 4s. I'm going to fill it up. I'm going to go, it's, this is 3D, if you recall, 3D, and it's not in there. Fill it up with all 10 electrons. And now I'm in 4P. And it is in 4P. And as, this is now going to sound very similar to what we just did. There's two over. So germanium is two over. That is your configuration, your shorthand configuration. And so again, you're going to go backwards until you hit a noble gas, one of these. It has to be one of these. But again, you, do, you don't want to use this one, the one before it. You have to go all the way backwards. So if you're to use this noble gas, you can't go forwards and get back to germanium. You've got to use the one before it. Put that in brackets and you move forward from there. And there's 4s2 and 4p2. So that is how you handle shorthand configurations. We will ask you to do those a lot because it's much quicker than trying to fill in. You know, you're going to get so used to doing 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, all that, that it's nice to be able to shorthand it with the noble gas in brackets. But again, it's got to be one of these noble gases. It's got to be the one that comes before it. And just to give you some ideas here, here's some examples. Notice that the noble gases go in brackets, and then from there, we simply proceed forward. So again, for... Um, RB rubidium down here, uh, you'd expect krypton to be right before it. And then uh, rubidium is going to be the first one in the 5S group. And that's it. It's nice and short, and it makes life much simpler. So just real quick, a little bit of a, a couple of questions, and I like these a lot. And when I like questions a lot, and I do this in the yellow, um, you need to really pay attention as potential test questions. So if you think about titanium... And in its ground state, and this is something I'll talk about in the next slide as well, but when I say ground state, remember, when you have an electron in an excited state, it's moved up in energy level. So it goes from ground to an excited state, but it's actually physically moved up in energy level because it's absorbed energy. And that's going to complicate things for configurations. So a lot of times you'll see us talk about being in the ground state, meaning nothing weird is happening. Just fill with the off-bow principle is what we mean by ground state. Okay. So we've got titanium, it's in its ground state. You should look at your periodic table and think about the configuration for titanium. I want to know which of those orbitals listed is only partially filled. Take a moment. And when we look at this for the normal configuration and you would have been okay to just do the shorthand configuration because the shorthand configuration gets you right here. And notice that an S can hold two. So that's full, that's filled. P can hold six, that's filled, that's filled, that's filled. We just said that S can hold two. So the only one that's not filled for titanium is this 3D. It's only got two, even though a D can hold 10. So again, that's a nice little test question. It's getting, it's trying to get to you to, uh, to think about electron configurations in a little bit of a different way. Finally, here's the one I was talking about. This is, a, this is a nice question. It's a little bit hard, so think about it for a moment. So on this one, before I switch it and show the answer, if it's in an excited state, what you now need to realize is there's an electron that has been excited to a higher energy level. 
Remember, it was forced up there because it gained energy. And when it gained that energy, it moved up to a higher energy level. So really what we are looking for when we ask a question saying, all right, which one would show an excited state configuration? This does not follow off bow. Off bow says just fill into the lowest energy possible. But when we excite an electron, we are forcing it into a higher energy level or higher orbital that it doesn't want to be in. So what you want to do is check for potassium here. 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s1. There's nothing wrong there. We filled all of these up properly. 4s comes after 3p. That works. Let's skip down here. If you look at rubidium on the periodic table, shorthand version, we fill up krypton, and then rubidium's in 5s1. So there's nothing wrong there. For chlorine, you take the configuration of neon, which is number 10, and then you fill after that, 3s2 is properly filled, 3p5, that's proper. So to kind of reveal the answer here, it's chlorine. Notice, when we fill in sodium, I'm sorry, it's sodium. Just said chlorine, sodium. When we fill in sodium, there's 11 protons. It means we'll assume 11 electrons to fill in. And we should be going from 1s2 to 2s2 to 2p6. And after 2p, should come 3s. And 2 plus 2 plus 6, there's 10 electrons. It should be 3s1 for sodium. However, because we took this one electron in 3s and excited it up to 3p, notice how by just listing 3p1, we've skipped 3s. That 3s should be there. This depicts an excited state. So again, when you see... Um, uh, configuration that is not following off bow, we are trying to show you an excited state electron. So this should go 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, then 3s. The fact that we skipped 3s and went straight up to 3p, sodium is in the excited state in this situation. So again, that is a nice question that's getting you to combine both the ground state excited state from week three, as well as electron configuration from week four. Now, not all of your test questions would be like this one, but this is a good thoughtful uh, test question. So we will put some of these on from time to time, and you really need to know your stuff for a question like this. You need to know ground state and excited state, what that means, and you need, then need to connect it to the current material of electron configuration. So then I will let you practice on your own. You can get extra practice from me. And I just need to warn you, we will not be giving you uranium or anything gigantic. Uranium has 92 electrons that you would be filling in. It's easier with a shorthand, but even then, that's a really big element. And so we're not going to be doing crazy, crazy elements like that. So you will have a worksheet in class. You'll have extra practice in class. If you want practice from me, please let me know. Um, but we want you to practice on this because you're going to need to interpret it and be able to do it pretty quickly. So I hope that helps, whether you're in class or not. Hopefully you're feeling at least better about electron configurations. And then make sure that you practice.